So what the state just told you is their theory, right? That is their theory of what happened back on October 5th, 2017. You all will listen to the facts as they are presented and you will decide what you believe happened on that day. Now I want to start by talking about the presumption of innocence again, like we talked about last week and like Judge Bober instructed you about last week, right? Many of you, when Judge Bober said, uh, innocent until proven guilty, how many have heard that, that statement, right? You guys raised your hands, right? We've all heard that. Well, in a courtroom, a person charged with a crime is presumed innocent, right? It's this cloak of innocence that surrounds them. And it remains with them the entire time and through verdict, unless the state can overcome that presumption. And how do they do that, right? They do that by putting on evidence. Another thing you heard the court say last week was um, describing the burden of reasonable doubt, right? What is beyond and to the exclusion of a reasonable doubt? It's a very high burden, right? I don't know if all of you remember, I know you got a lot of information in just a short amount of time, but in civil court, right, the, the burden is lower, right? I think Judge Bober <coughs> described it as a tipping of the scales. But in a criminal courtroom, beyond and to the exclusion of all reasonable doubt, is an extremely high burden that the state needs to overcome. So, what happened in this case is that Isabella Tagliarini killed her boyfriend, Nicholas Wilcox, and blamed it on her ex-boyfriend, Eric Robinson. You will hear that Eric Robinson was arrested by the Plantation Police Department immediately, based on what Isabella Tagliarini told them. The police rushed to judgment. They thought what they had at first was someone being honest and straightforward. Turns out Ms. Tagliarini's stories and statements and details kept changing. I submit to you that innocent bystanders do not act this way, that things would not have unfolded the way they did if she was not guilty of killing her boyfriend herself. Now, for starters, Mr. Sapak said to you a couple times, the police were called, um, the police got involved. Well, why is that, right? It's a very passive way of saying something. Well, that's because Ms. Tagliarini was not the one who reported that her boyfriend was killed. She then, and her web of men, called her ex-husband, Nick Tagliarini. We have two Nicks, so if I wind up saying Wilcox or Tagliarini, um, I, I apologize, I think Mr. Sedbach even did the same, right? So she calls her ex-husband, Nicholas Tagliarini, and is telling him all this stuff, and then he calls the police. Why he calls the police and doesn't let Isabella call the police remains to be seen. But it's strange behavior for somebody who is allegedly innocent. So does Eric Robinson have clean hands in the acts that transpired on October 5th, 2017? No, he does not because he helped Isabella dispose of the body. And you will hear a lot of evidence about what transpired that day. Um, you will not hear a whole lot of uh, questioning from myself or Mr. Stadler with regard to the cleaning up and the disposing of Mr. Wilcox's body. So, as the state said already, Ms. Tagliarini was charged. So on October 5th is when Mr. Wilcox sadly died. Ms. Tagliarini gives five different statements under oath to the police. <clears throat> Finally, on October 14th, they confront her with all of the inconsistencies because as they start pulling surveillance, and doing things, they start to realize how what she had told them was not necessarily true. For example, I'll give you one example. 
She says that. Judge, I'm going to object this to our argument. Modify the order. Yes. The evidence, this is, go ahead. The evidence will show that she told the police that immediately after leaving the house, that her and Eric Robinson, with the body, with Mr. Wilcox's body in the bed of the, the Ford F-150, and I know I'm throwing a lot of details out to you, and this will all kind of come together as you start hearing the evidence, that they took that vehicle to the courthouse with the body in it, and that she waited, had no phone, he had taken her phone. What comes out in the next week or so after the lead detective pulls the footage from the Publix right down the street is that no, they were not in the F-150. In fact, Isabella Tagliarini was actually driving Eric Robinson's Cadillac to Publix. And the surveillance shows that Ms. Tagliarini has her phone the entire time and her purse, and that when Mr. Robinson comes to meet up with her at the Publix so they can leave, they're hugging, they're kissing, they're holding hands. Far different portrayal than what she told the police originally. You will hear that just two weeks before, Isabella Tagliarini and Nicholas Wilcox, right? You heard about this marriage contract. We'll hear more about that later, where the two of them drafted up some strange document about how in love they are, and they pricked their fingers and sealed it with blood. But you'll hear that just two weeks before, there was some turmoil where Mr. Tagliarini Actually, I'm sorry, see, I just did it. Mr. Wilcox, Nicholas Wilcox, had um, kicked Ms. Tagliarini out of the house. You will hear that she was charged, as the state yes, just told you. Yes. Okay, sidebar and opening statements. You don't see that uh, a lot. Let's use this opportunity to get a commercial break in. We'll get you back into the courtroom in Florida versus Robinson right after this. Stay with us. It's a mystery that's captivated the nation. This stretch is just so beyond what anyone could imagine. And left a trail of dead bodies. Lori Ballow Daybell, accused of triple murder, including her two youngest children. You'll hear every dramatic moment. Money, power, and sex. That's what this case is about. Just tell the truth. It's that simple. The Doomsday Cult Mom Murder Trial. Coverage continues today, only on Ford TV. Welcome back to Court TV Live. Uh, we are outside of the Ada County Courthouse in Boise, Idaho, where week three of the Lori, da uh, Lori Vallow Daybell trial is up and running. Sergeant David Stubbs on the stand for the state of Idaho. But our attention this morning is in Florida. Florida versus Eric Robinson. He's accused of killing Nicholas Wilcox back in 2017. The defense claims that it wasn't Robinson that murdered Wilcox. It was Isabella Tagliarini. She had a relationship with both of these men. He said, the defense says, nah, uh, Eric Robinson just helped her after she murdered Wilcox. We've been watching. We watched first the state's opening statement, and uh, now we're watching the defense opening. There was a sidebar. We're going to pick it up right after that sidebar broke up. Tagliarini, as the state told you, was arrested for her involvement in this case on October 14th. Right? She was charged with accessory after the fact. So that is, what, 14 minus 5, 9 days? 9 days as they began to investigate and see further what was, what was transpiring. Accessory after the fact, you will hear, is a crime that can, that, that someone could be punished up to 30 years in prison. But you will hear that she wound up pleading to taking a plea that the state offered her to change the charge to 
something much lower, where her exposure will only be up to five years, and where she will tell you she doesn't expect to do any jail time at all. So, at the end of this trial, after you've viewed all of the evidence, I am sure that you will find Mr. Robinson not guilty of murder in the second degree. And I know that because the evidence does not support it. Thank you.